are pretty on Ulysses. Hey Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. This is my May TBR. I don't usually do a TBR, but I love doing them. And usually not that organized, or I've got readathons or whatever on that kind of encompass my TBR for the month. I am doing the Asian readathon, and I've done a separate TBR for that. So I'm only going to quickly show you the books and not talk about them for that. And then I've got a bunch of other stuff, and I want to talk to you about that in more detail. And I don't have any other videos in the pipeline. Uh, before Friday Reads goes up, so I kind of was home a little bit early. Kenji's home a little bit late, and I want to make a video, so TBR it is. So I'm just going to show you my books for the Asian readathon. Tantuan Eng's The Garden of Evening Mists from Malaysia. Bei Feiyu's Three Sisters from China. Parisa Reza's The Garden of Consolation from Iran. That Long Silence by Shashi Deshpande from India. Sightseeing by Radawood Lapchar Owen Sap from Thailand. Uh, what Did You Eat Yesterday by Humi Yoshinaga from Japan. Also from Japan, The Housekeeper and The Professor by Yoko Ogawa. I talk in a little bit more detail in the Asian TBR video. You can go and check that out. But now I want to tell you about the other stuff. Let me get the ones that I don't have physically in my possession first so I don't forget. I have dropped the ball with my uh, reading of Welsh literature so far in 2019, so I want to pick that ball up, because I read quite a bit in the second half of 2018. Charlotte of Tired Mama Reads recommended three of her favorite Welsh novels to me. All of them were on Scribd. In May, I am going to read The Heyday in the Blood by Geraint Goodwin, and it's uh, like Country Dance. By Margaret Evans, this is set in a Welsh-English border town. Uh, it's a passionate love story, uh, some uh, rather dramatic consequences. That's all I know. I don't need to know anymore. Geraint Goodwin died in 1941, aged about late 30s. He died young, and this book was published the year of my father's birth, 1936. And I have coming, I've pre-ordered it. It's the Argentinian writer Ariana Harwich... I loved her Die, My Love, when I read it for novellas in November last year. And this, in May, she her second novel to be translated into English, Feeble Minded, will be out. And I have pre-ordered it. I should have it by middle of May. And I probably won't be able to stop myself from reading it right away because I loved Die, My Love so much. So that is on my TBR. May 1st, Sharon of Hooked on Books and I will be buddy reading, starting to buddy read this African novel, Transparent City by Onjaki. This is uh, set in Luanda, Angola. Onjaki's a fairly young writer with an interesting ethnic background, a mix of various nationalities. And I heard him interviewed on a CBC Canadian literary program and fell in love with him. In fact, I'm reading another African novel, and this will be a buddy read with Heidi of My Reading Life, a small country by Gail Fay. And Gail Fay was born in Burundi to a French father and a Rwandan mother. Translated from the French by Sarah Ardizone. And it's set in Burundi in 1992, which was a very tragic time to be living in Burundi or Rwanda. Alice Munro, the best short story writer in the world. Tomorrow, I will probably say Mavis Gallant is the best short story writer in the world, but Canadian women are the only people that can really write short stories. I might, after a couple beer, be prepared to entertain some debate that William Trevor might be also a master of the short story, but I maybe three or four beer before I'd be really be willing to entertain the notion. Alice Munro is the goddess of the short story. This is one of her later collections, Too Much Happiness. I read about a third of it if, when it came out, uh, probably in the early 2010s. I, it came out in 2009, but I was in a you know almost decade-long reading slump, and I never finished it. Kendra Winchester and I will be buddy reading it in May. The stories that I read were absolutely stunning, and I'm going to reread all those and finish the collection. Another buddy read that I'm really looking forward to is my very first Balzac novel, Cousin Bet. And this will be a buddy read with Ange of Beyond the Pages, and it's a bit of a chunkster. 
This will take us pretty much the whole month, I expect, to Buddy Reed. And I can't wait. 1846 novel. I know Brian of Bookish. It's one of his favorite novels or one of his favorite Balzac novels or something. And I think the only other Buddy Reed I have scheduled, because I'm trying to keep my Buddy Reads to a minimum, I think this is, what, five or six? And I, you know, starting from June, I'm trying to try to keep it down to about four. But I'm really looking forward to trying Lost Children Archive by Valeria Luiselli. This is a buddy read with Britta. I think there's a very good chance one or both of us will bail on this. But I hope that I might be, I don't know, is it a slim minority or a slim majority? It's such a marmite book, but I want to try it. I haven't read anything by her. I'm going to dive in with Britta. And I think to finish, just a couple other books. I started this with books that are, are I'm not buddy reading, and I'm going to close with a couple more that I'm not buddy reading, so whether I get to them next month or not, I want to. One is Max Porter's Lanny, which I've heard nothing but glowing reviews of. I wasn't ever interested enough to pick up his first book. It's poetry or something. I wasn't interested, but this one sounds really good. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge, a little magical, realistic, or fairy tale. I, when I read the first page... In my book haul, there was some weird stuff happening, but I liked it. I liked the love, the writing, so I'm going to give it a try. And finally, this is a collection of short stories that she's actually a Canadian. She's actually born in Saskatchewan, this writer. I'd never heard of her, but she now is a professor of creative writing in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Rebecca Lee's collection of short story, Bobcat. This was a gift from a litzy friend of mine, Sarah, and I've had it on my shelf for three years or something. And then, recent, more recently, Curtis, formerly of Curtis Books and Books, who I keep in touch with personally, uh, read it and loved it. And so it's coming to the top of my pile. I thought I might even get to it sooner, but short story collections related to various readathons kept bumping it, but I do want to get to it in May, I hope. It's supposed to be just incredible. Hey, well, no, I forgot to. So, <laughs> one is a buddy read. Uh, just, I was staring right at it on my list, didn't see it. But I'm very much looking forward to reading my first Otessa Moshfeg, which is also her first, her novel, Mick Glue. I heard an interview with her on the Bookworm podcast, Michael Silverblatt's podcast from KCRW, a year or so ago, and... I was convinced, listening to that, that I I was convinced that I was not at all sure Otessa Moshfeg was going to be a writer for me, but I was definitely convinced that the way to begin with her was with her debut novel, McGlue. And I'm doing that sometime in May as a buddy read with two of my dear friends from Litzy, Leah, who I've mentioned many times before, and Cindy, who I have never done a buddy read with before. So the three of us will be, but will be buddy reading Mick Glue. I'll put the link to that podcast interview. It was fascinating. I really don't know how I'm going to get along with Otessa, but I'm going to try and I'm going to start at the very beginning. Juan, don't worry. I'm no threat to you. <laughs> And I didn't include any audiobooks, and I hadn't actually addressed my mind to audiobooks, but I think I'm going to add to my Asian Readathon TBR and try the new novel Trust Exercise by Susan Choi, which I have on audio. And it is hot off the press earlier in this month, set in an American suburb in the early 80s. And there's something I've heard. What have I heard? There's some almost controversy about it, about is it based on her friends and their friends are mad? Is it something like that from the New Yorker, April 17th? I'll put the link to this article. Oh, I read part of this article for, by Katie Waldman in the New Yorker. I didn't read much of it because I don't remember how it turned out, but she found herself showing up in <laughs> the novel. An electrifying novel that speaks directly to the Me Too movement. Anyway, there's something about some people that f f found themselves showing up only thinly veiled or not at all veiled in the fiction. So interesting. So I, I think I'm going to try it on audio. And uh, I've got all kinds of other audiobooks that I might try if this one doesn't work out or if I have time to do two. Lately, I've only been doing one audiobook a month, which is fine. 
So that would be it if all goes well. So that is my main TBR. What do you think? I'm sure I'm going to bail on at least a third of them. That's, that's fine, but I'm excited to give them all a try. Thanks for watching.